Hey, it's Rob, the Ignorant Entrepreneur, and as some of you may know, it's been a fairly slow week with the likes of crypto and NFTs, with crypto down and NFTs down, and so I, I thought I'd take some time to reel it back and just talk a little bit about what crypto, blockchain, and NFTs, as well as Web3 are, and even take a critical look at them to say, are they as great as we make them out to be? Now, hopefully you know by now, I am pro-crypto, I'm pro-NFTs. But I do see the con side and the argument against them, what could work against crypto, especially with government involvement, and even as far as with NFTs and how they're concerned. Make no mistake about it, they're trying to avoid certain laws and rules that haven't quite caught up to the NFT space yet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's reel it back. So cryptocurrency, blockchain, the ecosystem around these technologies have been around for almost 13 years now. Considering that Bitcoin, perhaps the most recognizable cryptocurrency, was invented in 2008. The ever volatile but strongly increasing movement of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptocurrencies has kept them in constant news cycles for years. Thus, the public eye. The underlying technology that powers most cryptocurrencies is the distributed list of records known as the blockchain and has also been adapted for other uses. However, the primary issue with most blockchain implementations, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, is that they use proof of work to verify transactions and other data. Primary issue? I thought this was the benefit. Well, it's a computational puzzle and as more and more records are added to the blockchain or more people own and mine Bitcoin, data takes longer to verify, which means computers have to use exponential exponentially more electricity. One study conducted by Cambridge University, you actually might be aware of this, this was pretty popular. It was back in February. They actually estimated that Bitcoin alone uses more electricity each year than the entire nation of Argentina. And much of that power comes from fossil fuels. There's an alternative that doesn't require the same computational cost, proof of stake, but only smaller cryptos and blockchains are using it right now, such as Nano and Cardano. The Ethereum network has been slow moving in transition to proof of stake, and there has been essentially no progress on moving Bitcoin in that direction. And one of my other gripes with, not gripes, but one of my concerns with Bitcoin is right now it's still no threat to the great U.S. market and a lot of markets out there. Meaning that the U.S. dollar market, which is worth hundreds of trillions of dollars, is still looking at Bitcoin as a joke. But the second Bitcoin actually starts to become a threat, the U.S. is not going to sit idly by and say, oh, yes, let people have their cryptos they're gonna take some sort of action, likely with the involvement of making their own cryptocurrency. That is the single greatest threat against Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Make no mistake about it. So then we move on to NFTs, non-fungible tokens, NFTs for short. NFTs are intended to be unique digital items with ownership verified by a blockchain, in many cases, the Ethereum network. However, blockchains don't actually store the digital items, only the links to the file. In essence, the NFT is more like a cashier's receipt than the actual ownership of anything. Now, the way that I've been getting very much involved in the NFT space of recent and just following all these different projects, a friend of mine is launching his own project. It's been very interesting the ways, actually very creative. Let me not downplay it. It's been very creative the ways that some of these projects have gone about finding ways of utility. And I hope to explore that in some of my future videos. But in essence, a lot of these projects are trying to provide value for their users in hopes that they'll ultimately be a part of some metaverse or create their own metaverse, which make no mistake about it, most of these projects won't be able to create a metaverse, let alone have a presence within it that has value. Uh, but that's that's a whole nother interesting space with figuring out which projects, Decentraland, Axie Infinity, Facebook, all these groups that are trying to build the metaverse, or if it's just going to be this great ecosystem that there's all these different metaverses that you're able to go to. And I'm sorry if I'm getting ahead of myself. You might not even know what metaverses are. If you don't know what metaverses are, please check my previous videos. But all this to say, NFTs are trying to play on the future of metaverses to say, hey, you buy our NFTs today, you'll be able to use them in our metaverse. You'll be able to wear the NFT as an avatar as you move through the world. You'll have special privileges, VIP access. It makes sense when you're thinking about celebrity status and all the different layers that you could add into a virtual world. 
There's that. And then there's also the ways that they're actually trying to directly put money in your pocket just by the fact that people are transacting that NFT. That's the simplest way to think about it is the very transactional value of people holding and people selling. Part of that transaction cost goes to what's known as a community wallet. It doesn't go back to the creators. It can in some cases, but the very smart projects, they're putting it back into a community wallet that's being distributed back amongst the community. And there are even some projects that are sharing in profits by investing in other NFT projects. They're even burning concepts and staking as well as breeding to create new NFTs. There's an entire array of different techniques for people to have an NFT and provide value to their community for holding, trading, and just being active in that community. But in order to do that, and I'm not going to get too deep into that, they're evading or skirting around certain tax laws that wouldn't allow them to do that so easily. And lastly, with the emerging technology, there's concept for Web3 which is basically growing in popularity, probably function in a lot of the same ways as what we've mentioned prior. In this case, with the blockchain functioning as a DNS service, but no one actually has built a functioning version of it yet. There are countless problems with the blockchain and popular cryptocurrencies, like how it was contributed to dark web marketplaces and malware that drain CPU resources and battery. With some of the hacks that involve exchanges and some news around it, you might expect a lot of companies to possibly stay clear, but that clearly hasn't been the case. We've seen Elon Musk jump in the gun and increasingly a lot more companies, even as recent as McDonald's, jumping into the NFT sphere. There have been, simply put, gross NFT scams running around where people just clean out other people's wallets and basically abuse them by clicking on links. Do not click on any DM link in Discord. That's where a lot of these groups find life. Do not click those links. Who else has jumped on the bandwagon, you might ask? Well, we got Epic Games, which announced that it was open to selling games that support cryptocurrency or blockchain-based assets, even after CEO Tim Sweeney said a month earlier that the field of NFTs is, and I quote, currently tangled up with an intraceable mix of scams, interesting decentralized tech foundations, and scams. Ubisoft said in an earnings call that it was working on blockchain-powered games. Square Enix revealed it will incorporate NFTs and blockchain technology in its future games. Twitter launched a team dedicated to all things blockchain and Web3, and Reddit announced it would convert karma points into cryptocurrency. Disney even announced NFTs for characters and icons from its films. Now, before we move forward, can you guess a time frame for all those events happening? Perhaps a few months or maybe even the past year? No, sir. All those announcements happened in the past month. It's as if every CEO at once learned what NFTs were and decided to do something with it. So... Smart money is probably with, maybe there's something more here if the CEOs are trying to be so heavily involved. Anyway, everybody wants a piece. So in ever-growing space, a lot of people still don't know where NFTs are going or how long these communities will actually be here. Or, you know, some people say that this is the start of new companies and new empires like Nike. Apple even. But there is an environmental impact. And like I said, the government is not going to sit by passively and allow cryptocurrencies to run wild. And it's not just the US, there are other countries too. NFTs is definitely going to need a lot more structure as well behind its models and how they're providing utility, how that should be taxed, how these type of companies should be treated because they're essentially operating as fundraising platforms. You invest in a project for what it's going to be, not what it is. And so people are raising capital for these projects that they really don't know the future too much of how everything is going to go together. It's just, again, it's this insane hype that's followed COVID with stocks, crypto, NFTs. So yeah, again, I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts on the matter. I'm not entirely sure about the tax consequences of NFTs. I just know that it's been a common recurring theme that people have been saying, hey, we have to phrase passive income like this. Whenever something comes, we'll deal with it at that time. But yes. This was my take. Again, it's a slow week. We're seeing crypto fall. I'm not really concerned. I'm still of the belief Bitcoin's going to 100,000 and Ethereum's going to 10,000. So let me know what you guys think. If you had any other problems with some of these technologies, you can just leave a comment there in the comment section. This has been The Ignorant Entrepreneur. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm out.